Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad to be here today. It's been a, a long week, but uh, God has blessed us anyway to be here this Friday, uh, October the 9th. Uh, because love never fails. That's what it says in 1 Corinthians uh, 13, 7. Uh, because the Lord is our shepherd, and we shall not uh, want. He will never fail us. He will never forsake us or leave us alone. As it says in the 23rd Psalms, if everyone turns there to the 23rd Psalms, the Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and to shield me. I shall not want. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still and quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul life. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death. I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod to protect and your staff to guide, they comfort and console me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows, surely goodness and mercy and unfailing love, as I said, it never fails, unfailing love shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell forever throughout all the days in the house and in the presence of the Lord. Because he, his love never fails. And, uh, If you could change that for me, I'll just glance at it or put the wrong color. Oh, no. What? I hadn't even said it yet. Love never fails. First Corinthians 13, 8 is where you will see that. And the God is uh, continually protecting us. And, and we need to know that in, in this day of uh, time and trouble when we are uh, concerned about the virus and people are protesting and and all kind of things are going on. Turn to Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the refuge and fortress of my life. Whom shall I dread? When the wicked came against me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. Though an army encamped against me, my heart will not fear the war against me. The war arise against me. Even this I am confident. The one thing I have asked of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord in his presence all the days of my life. Help me, Holy Spirit. To gaze, gaze upon the beauty, the delight and lovingness and majestic grandeur of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. For in the day of trouble he will hide me in his shelter. In the secret place of his tent he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock and now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. In his tent I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Oh, hear, O oh Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious and compassionate to me and answer me. When you say, seek my face in prayer, require my presence as your greatest need, my heart to say to you, your face, O oh Lord, I will seek on the authority of your word. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon me or leave me, O oh God of my salvation. Although my mother and my, my father and my mother have abandoned me, yet the Lord will take me up, adopt me as his child. Teach me your way, O oh Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my enemies who lie in wait. Do not give up 
to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have come against me. They breathe out violence. I would have despaired had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for, confidently expect the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for and confidently expect the Lord because he never fails. Amen. God is good to us. Amen. And we ought to be good to one another. He don't want us to um, hold grudges against one another. Amen. Or be, uh, he wants to have a forgiving heart toward one another as he has toward us. And if we say we belong to God, then we ought to have the love of God in us. Because when we became saved, he poured his love in us. And when he did that, we became free. We, we have salvation because he, and he made us qualified to give you the word. Uh, nobody on this earth can qualify us to give the word but God because uh, that's the kind of God he is. Uh, in uh, 2 Corinthians, the third chapter, uh, it, it says it here, Paul was writing uh, to the disciples and those who were followers of God to, so they can be strong in the Lord. In the, uh, second, the third chapter of the second Corinthians, the third chapter, the first verse, just reading it says, are we starting to commend ourselves again or do we need like some false teachers letters or recommendations to you or from you. No. <laughs> you are our letter of recommendation written in our hearts. Mm -hmm. When you come to God, he writes it in your heart, recognized and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ. Children, we ought to be Christ-like and walking like Christ. Delivered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, mm. not on tables of stone, but on the tablets of human hearts. Mm. See, our hearts have to be circumcised by God. Such in a, the confidence and steadfast reliance and absolute trust that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficiently qualified in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency and qualifications come from God. He has qualified us, making us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant of the salvation through Christ. Not of a letter of a written code, but of the Spirit. For the letter of the law heals by revealing sin and demanding obedience. But the Spirit gives life. God wants to forgive us, children, for the sins we have done. But you must mm -hmm. receive him into your heart, and you must forgive others. Now, if you have no problem with that, you need to pray to God through the Holy Spirit to create in you a clean heart, renew your mind. And you must get in the Word. And you must let the uh, Spirit of God lead you. Because you should, you should be able to do that. You can do it with the help of God. You can do that. Because that, that's holding back all your blessings and all the gifts heaped up on gifts and all the favors that God want to give to you. Now it says in 7, Now if the ministry of death engraved in letters or stones the covenant of law which lead to death because of sin. I can't say it again enough. When you don't have forgiveness in your heart, that's a sin. It's a sin against God. It's, it's something that is his will that we forgive. And if, if you want to be healed, which is his will, you got to do what he tells you to do. Not what you want to do. It says, uh, why do you think people just make up doctrine as they go? 
because they want to they don't want to change they don't want to repent they don't want to um they feel they high up here somewhere and they forget all of us are made out of dust and dirt and that we are just some clay and god is the potter he makes us he, he fixes us he molds us and uh that's what Satan, Satan uh, forget himself because he looks so good and so beautiful. Mm -hmm. He started thinking he was high up like God. Mm -hmm. And so that's what happens to us. We get confused and deceived by Satan. Mm -hmm. And it's not, uh, Satan probably be saying, I didn't even tell him all that, but that's because most people want to, they want to be that way. You know, we born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Mm -hmm. We come here like that, lying and cheating and still. And uh, God wants us to have salvation, children. He, he don't want us to, he don't want any of us to perish. And that's why love never fails. He sent his son, Jesus Christ, here for us. Turn to John's, uh, the first chapter of John. It says here, uh, in the beginning, before all time was the word, Christ, and the word was with God. And the word was God himself. And he was continually existing in the beginning and co uh, eternally with God. And all things were made and came into existence through him. And without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. And him was life and the power to bestow life. And the life was the light of men. And the light shines on in the darkness, and the darkness did not understand it, or overpower it, or appropriate it, or absorb it, and is unreceptive to it. And Christ, it says here in, uh, we can read here, uh, 9, it says, And there it was, the true light, that's Jesus, the genuine, the steadfast light which coming into the world enlightens everyone. He, Christ, was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, that were be belonged to him, his world, his creation, his possession. Those who were his own people, the Jewish nation, did not receive or welcome him. But to as many as did receive and welcome him, he gave the he gave the right, the authority, the privilege to become children of God. That is to those who believe in and adhere and trust and rely on his name, and were born not of the blood, natural conception, nor of the will of a flesh, physical impulse, nor of the will of man, that of a natural father but of God, that is the divine and supernatural birth. They were born of God, spiritually transformed, renewed, and sanctified. That's what we are, children. Those who are children of, of God, that's what we are. We've been spiritually transformed, re renewed, and we've been sanctified. And it says here, the word of Christ became flesh and lived among us, and we actually saw his glory. And the glory as belongs to the one and only begotten Son of the Father. The Son who is truly unique, the only one of his kind, who is full of grace and truth and absolutely free of deception. And uh, uh, it says here, when you go to the 16th verse, for out of his fullness, the superabundance of his grace and truth, we have all received grace upon grace, spiritual blessings upon spiritual blessings, favor upon favor, gift heaped upon gifts. For the law was given through Moses, but grace, hallelujah, the unearned, undeserved favor of God, because his love never fails, and truth came through Jesus Christ. And it says that no one has seen God, his essence, his divine nature at any time, the one and only begotten God that is unique, is the unique son who is in the intimate presence of God, 
He has explained him and interpreted and revealed the awesome wonder of the Father. And that's what Jesus did when he came here. He was talking about nobody but the Father. You know, the heavenly Father. And so uh, this is what I'm saying here this evening. It says his love never failed. That's why he sent his son here so we could receive salvation and receive eternal life. All you have to do is believe and have faith that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins, you and me, because we were, we were, we were sinners. And uh, he never had any sin. He, he was sinless, but he's fixed it so we don't really have to be uh, sin. He, he was tempted in every way, but he didn't fall into sin. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to either. He's given us the Holy Spirit, as it says in John 16, if you have time to read through John 16, it says it over and over. And then it says it again, even in, I believe, John 14. So you got to allow yourself uh, to be led. Yeah, you have to allow yourself to be led. And you can be. If you can be led by Satan to do all the, the things that that we shouldn't do, we can be led by the Holy Spirit. Well, if you don't know your spirit, your but spirit some people will don't not bear witness. Right. To your spirit. Well, a lot of people don't know they have. They don't. They really don't know that when they uh, become, you know, give themselves to Christ, they've been transformed and renewed. The spirit here, not the body. Your body's still the same. You had ashy feet. That day you still got ashy feet. Well, well, you you before stuff. you're born again, you're still a spiritual being. Right, you are. But you can be, what spirit are you with? You with Satan. With? Right, you with Satan or you with the Lord. You know, it's a lot of different spirits. We are part being. Right, and God wants us to choose. He wants our spirit created brand new. He right. Wants that old spirit to die. Right. Because see, the spirit is what's supposed to lead us. So if you still have that old spirit, that old man in you, then you're still going to do what he tells you to do. Because see, the flesh want to be satisfied. Amen. Whatever makes the flesh feel good, that's what it wants. And see, uh, when you come to God, it's not about yourself no more. You become selfishless. Yeah, and uh, so, so, uh, so, what you're doing, you you get this love in you, the love of God, and we're gonna, I'm gonna we can go to that now. Let's go to First Corinthians uh, thirteen, chapter thirteen. Because love never fails. Amen. We're gonna read through this, and then. Uh, if anyone has some questions, we can go through that. It says here, the first verse, it says, If I speak with tongues of men and of angels, but have not love for others, growing out of God's love for me. See, we get this love from God. Amen. So if you don't have the love in you, then you better go uh, check yourself well, you before you wreck person. yourself. For and you, and you're saying, I... I must not be saved. And you need to, you know, pray in but the spirit. You know if you're saved or not. Yeah, you do. Because your your spirit but you know how, is with the Holy Spirit. You know it's how you, not bearing with I was getting with ready God. to say. You're not saved. You know if you're saved and your heart is getting convicted. Amen. Now if someone uh they they gonna do these things and they don't have no remorse in their heart or anything then you know you really can't say if they saved or not a lot of, we're not gonna know that to the end of uh, end of time right but everybody because, uh, good right people act so good right. but some people you would look at them and they just like a little angel <laughs> but behind closed doors they like a booger bear with you a knife Satan can transform right Right. His ministers can too. And so we're not supposed to be going judging people. Mm -hmm. So don't do it, children. You would get in big trouble doing that. Because the Lord said, whatever way you judge, and you're going to be judged that same way yourself. Amen. So don't do it. Just say, bless the Lord hard and pray for them. And continue to show them the right way yourself. 
Uh, some people be around people like that, and, and they uh, they weren't even saved, but they get saved by being around somebody who is sanctified and holy, watching them. They never had somebody uh, be kind to them without wanting something back. But a true Christian gives without expecting anything back. You just give because that's the way your heart is like God. And it says here, uh, so uh, others growing out of God's love for me, it goes into us. And then I have become only, you only become a noisy gong or a clinging symbol, just like an annoying distraction if you don't have uh, love for one another. And the second uh, verse says, and if I have the gift of prophecy and speak a new message from God to the people, and understand all the mysteries and possess all knowledge. And if I have all sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains, but do not have love reaching out to others, I am nothing. It is. It's, it really is. Because that's all the, that's some of the gifts of the Spirit. There. Yeah, it's gifts of the Spirit. But you don't have love. Don't have any love. Then it says, if I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned, but do not have love, it does me no good at all. Wow. It says, love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful, and is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked, nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong endured. So that's some signs that you can tell people are not walking in love. Right, because you made... Uh, well, there's a whole lot of difference that says um, patient. Right. And that's patient. Serenity. That's being quiet and thoughtful. You know, mm -hmm. Not jealous or right. envious. Does not brag. And is not proud or arrogant. Right. It's not, you know. Not totally sensitive um, where you can't say something to them to, you know, do a little correcting and they, what you, you know, they ready to throw down and fight or, or curse at you. You know, um, easily angered. Mm -hmm. You know. A chip on the shoulder. Knock it off and I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> you know, that kind of person. And it, it doesn't take into account a wrong endured. You know, some things may happen to us. Something. Somebody did something and right away the person wanted to do vengeance. You know, take vengeance in their hands. And the scriptures say vengeance is the Lord's he shall repay. But they can't wait. They got to take matters in their hand and uh, take care of the person theirself. So if somebody has done wrong, mm -hmm. somebody really done wrong, uh -huh. it does not take into account of a wrong endured. Right, so it's not uh, making a list, you know, and that list would be an unforgiving list. <laughs> you know, you did this in 19... Uh, 80, you did this in 82, you know, That's I got a list. That's why people can't because they got that list. Right, they got a list. And you know, they, it up. they I mean, didn't endure the wrong. You know, you've heard people talk about something that happened to them, and you'll ask them when it happened, and they're talking about 30 years ago. Right, there was a kid, and they never forgave their brother or their sister. Mm -hmm. And the person it was so bad about the brother or sister may be sick in the hospital on a deathbed and they still won't go see him. It'll be a dying day before I go see him. A day in hell. Yeah, that's, that's wicked. All because mama may have did something for them that she didn't do for, for them. Or mm. well, they got the car and they didn't. So it, it'd be a whole lot of mess going on. And then it says here in 60, it does not rejoice at injustice but rejoice with the truth when right and truth prevail. And, and that is true. You don't want to um, be rejoicing when some injustice has been done to people. 
I don't know what it sounds like. I love you. It's in here somewhere. And then the, the other thing, children, I, I had to pray about this week. We had to pray for people when they sick in the hospital, even when they're your enemies, you had to pray for people. Because you don't wish nothing bad on anyone. Nothing bad on anyone. So we had to uh, stay prayerful for everyone because God loves everybody. He expects us to love people too. And love bears all things, it says in seven, regardless of what comes. Believes all things. Look for the best in each other. The best in one another. It hopes all things remain steadfast during a difficult time. Endures all things without weakening. You still in that same verse? I was on verse number seven. What, is, what it's saying that love bears all things regardless of the, of the outcome. Believes all things. Looking for the best in, in each one. Hopes all things remain steadfast during a difficult time. Endures all things without weakening. That's kind of like we're, we're society we're in now. Right. It really is. You know, we, we, we got to help one another. And we have to um, be steadfast holding on to the Lord. We really do because we're looking, we be looking at things too much instead of uh, going to God. You know, every time you look on the news, it just it goes on and on. It's very negative. And, it's and very that, depressing. That is, um, if you sit around and look at the news all the time, you you you'll not love. You will fall love. out of love. And you will faint. And you will get weak. <laughs> you will. Uh huh. And you will you will start blaming God, and he didn't. He's not uh, no, in this. Because his love never fails. It said his love never fails, it never fades nor ends. But as for prophecy, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for gift of special knowledge, it will pass away. For well, we you know, know this verse here, mm -hmm. where they, this is why a lot of people don't speak in tongues. Okay. They use this verse. They said tongues has passed away. No, it said it, it would cease. It right. would cease. Well, if that's the case, uh, knowledge has too. Because right. Because people are ignorant. They are. <laughs> As, uh, Steve Harvey said they're ignorant. Ignorant. <laughs> they yeah. said it will. Right. They didn't say it has. But you know, it will when this earth ends. Right, it will. People, yeah. people will take that verse out of context. That's one of the verses they take out of context. You were in the known in uh, 2 Corinthians well, the third it, it chapter. Well, it says that because God will never fail. Right. Everything right. else is going to fail. Right. But um, God will never fail because he is love and he is a spirit. And it says here in the ninth, for we know in part and we prophecy in part. For our knowledge is fragmentary and incomplete. We don't know right. everything. We have yeah, we bits know in part. We know in part. Now this is Paul writing this, who wrote two thirds of the New Testament right. by the Spirit of God, and he said, "We know in part." He we put know himself in part. Right. We know in part. Mm. And see what what he's trying to tell us is that um, we're not supposed to let ourselves get all so emotional. Uh, that we become, you know, so quick to get anger and angry and envious and jealousy. Those those things are uh, feelings, you know, emotional um, feelings. And we get our strength from the Word That's of God. That's led by feelings, not by the Spirit. Right. And that will get you in a lot of trouble. A lot of people say, well, I feel. Right, I feel. And you may say, I feel like slapping her upside the head, but you do, you're going to be in jail. You may get killed. Yeah, be Talking about what you feel like doing. Yeah, you can't be led by feelings. No, because it'll get you in, a lot of people that get killed by feelings. They secure, they, they, something, they feel somebody getting ready to kill them or something like that, and a person may not even have that intention. They run out in front of a truck mm. and get ran over there. They are dead. Mm. Person wasn't paying That's any fear, attention. Too. That's fear. fear and, and that's um, 
And that's a sin too, because yeah, God did not give have, us um, just a uh, spirit of fear. You can have fear, you can have feelings, or you can have faith. Right. I want faith. I want to put my faith in God. Walk in the love. Matter of fact, faith works through love. It does. That's what Galatians is. Because if you, if, you have, if you love God, you're going to have faith in Him. Amen. It's in, and, and we're supposed to rely on Him. Amen. Constantly. You have confidence in Him. Right, and have confidence in Him. Now, if you have it in yourself, you better be scared. I better be scared <laughs> if it's in me. And see, that's what happens. People are, they have confidence in their self. And so that's when they waver and have doubt because they, they, they may talk a good game, but when the, when the rubber hit the road, they be ready to call on the Lord their self. Or they, run. Or run. Most of the time they run, and that's when they get, they get weary and weak and get hurt. They, they, um, like I said, they may end, end up getting killed. But then 10 says, but when that which is complete and perfect comes, that which is incomplete and partial will pass away. Amen. When I was a child, I talked like a child. Amen. And we all did. Amen. And I thought like a child. And I reasoned like a child. Amen. And when I became a man or a woman, I did away with childish things. For Amen. now... In this time of imperfection, we see in the mirror dimly a blurred reflection, a riddle, an enigma. Stop there. What is he talking about there? Is he talking about himself? Well, he said, for now, in this, yeah, we, he's we, talking we, about yeah, all of us. About us. You know I mean? Yeah, us. all of us. We see. Yeah, we us. see. Yeah. Face to face. Mm -hmm. And now in part, just in fragments, but when I know fully, just as I have been fully known by God. And now mm -hmm. there remain faith, abiding trust in God, his promises, his hope, confident expectation of eternal salvation, love, unselfish love for others, growing out of God's love for me. These three, the choicest graces, but the greatest of these is love. Because mm -hmm. if you love God and you know his love never fails, you're not going to let your heart be troubled. As it says in John 14, you're not going to let your heart be afraid. And you know you have received his peace, not as man has given you, but as God has given you a perfect peace, where you can be in a storm. That's what that love is. You can be in a storm and you don't have to worry. Because he is your shepherd. As it says in the Psalms. Oh, right. And, um, and that's right. Yes, he was. And shipwreck. Shipwreck. Got right. off the <laughs> ship. He told them that they should have left that place. Right, and they was upset too. <laughs> And, uh, and they um, lost all their know, goods. They was, um, you know, in a, in a storm. You know, yeah. he told them to cheer up. Right, because they were merchants they were too. Throwing up over the side of the boat. Right. Cheer up. Right. Because uh, an angel had appeared to him and said, "You must go to Rome. You must, right. You must stand before Caesar." Right. And see, that's another thing. The Lord don't told you something that you're supposed to. That's do. what he was supposed to do. That the storm can't take me out. Just like. Uh, you know, um, I'm trying to think of the prophet. Jonah? Jonah. Right. He was supposed to go to Nineveh. Right. But he didn't want to go to Nineveh. Yeah. Because he was way up here. He thought of himself higher than them. He felt they should be punished. Right. So, And he wanted them to be punished he did. with the wrath of God. Yeah, he did. Want and so uh, he didn't him. want to go. He wasn't walking in love. Right. He didn't want to go. Right. Got on the ship and the ship was sinking and, and everything was going on. They came to him. They knew he was a prophet. Amen. See, everybody knew when you were a child of God. Right. And so they came to him and said, Couldn't you pray and ask your God? Mm -hmm. You know, because they were they were our heathens. Ask your God to save us. Mm -hmm. And then that's when he told them, It's me. I'm the one. I'm the one who stole the chicken. I'm the one who clean the chicken. I'm the one who ate the chicken and it was good. But no, he just told him that he was the one who was being disobedient to right. God. That's why he was supposed to go to Nineveh and that's what was happening. 
He said, throw me overboard. And they evidently, even though they were some heathens, they didn't even want to do that. I said, no, we don't want to do that. So they kept bailing the water out, trying to keep the ship from sinking. But so much water was coming, it was sinking anyway. So they finally threw them over. And the storm ceased. And that's why we, we had to just trust God, believe in God. We had to be obedient, children, and, and repent and do what he tells us to do. Because as I read in John, the third chapter, no, it was John the first chapter. He had gifts upon gifts. He had uh, spiritual blessings upon spiritual blessings for us, grace upon grace for us. He has all this children to give to us, uh, but he can't give it to you when you just won't, uh, won't come to him. You have a choice to make today. You can be with Jesus or you can be with Satan. It's only, it's only one or the other. There's no in between. You know what's so amazing about this 13th chapter? Mm -hmm. It's right after 12, which is the manifestations of the Spirit. Yes. And the last verse he says, um, but honestly, desire and strive for the greatest gifts, if inquiring them is going to be your goal. Mm -hmm. And yet, I show you a you a still more excellent way, one of the choicest graces, right, and the highest of them all, unselfish love, right. And then, in the, right after this 13th chapter, he says, in the 14th chapter, right, pursue this love with eagerness, make it your goal, yet honestly desire and cultivate the spiritual gifts to be used by believers for the benefit of the church, mm -hmm. but especially that you may prophesy to foretell the future, to speak a new message from God to the people. That's right. For one who speaks in an unknown tongue does not speak to people, but to God. Right. And just, you know, it's and amazing the how right. all this, God keeps giving you more and more light uh, all this, you know, because this was written in chapter and verse. This right. All goes this all together. goes together. And that's why when I read you know, I spiritual read Spiritual gifts and, and, you know, speaking in tongues and all that, it all goes together. Right. That's why and when that, I read, I continue to read. You know, I, I just can't stop. And then when I get ready to teach, I just let the Holy Spirit lead me mm -hmm. wherever He want me to go because He knows who's listening. He, he knows who's here. And he know what they need to be taught and what they need to hear. Because the hearing the word is what cleanses us. The word uh, heals us. His holy word sanctifies us. That's all we have to do is keep putting the word outright. And so I, I, I appreciate everyone that's uh, listening and that was here tonight. But, you know, I'm going to pray for you now because... God does not uh, just have you hear his word for nothing. You get something from it. We get something from his word. You're supposed to do something. And then you have to do something. You have to change your ways. I mean, if you believe that this is his word, mm -hmm. he's speaking to you. Right. Because he, Paul mentioned we, that's you and me. Right. Getting up. Right. So he's speaking to us, but this is the way he wants us to live, walk this love walk. He does. You know, not like the world. He, he wants like us to, he wants us to walk this way habitually. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, it needs to become a habit. Just a, a habit for all of us to just uh, have Christian love for one another. Mm -hmm. And to be uh to walk it. Be doers, as you said. Talking is easy. You yeah, can just yeah. say all kind of little things while somebody uh, listening to you. And then as soon as the back is turned, you can just uh, turn into a Tasmanian devil. But he does want, now listen to you, this is one thing. He do want us to um, love one another, you know, and have unselfish love one another, but he does not want us to be lovers of this world. 
And that's the one thing. He don't want us to love uh, the sin of the world. It says, do not love the world. John. This is 1 John, uh, the second chapter, the 15th verse. It says, do not love the world of sin that opposes God and his precepts, nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust and sensual craving, uh, 15, it's chapter um, 2, 15. For all that is in the world, the lust and sensual craving of the flesh, and the lust and longing of the eyes, and boastful pride of life, potentious confidence in one's resources, or instability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but are from the world. And that's why a lot of people are upset now, you know, with this virus and, mm -hmm. and everything, because they had confidence in their own resources, and they had confidence in the stability of the things of the earth, and now everything is unstable. It really is. Jobs are unstable. Housing us on state. The 17th verse, the and then it's, says right then I'm gonna I keep on reading, but I just pause there mm -hmm. to say that. And then it says the world is passing away, children. And with its lessons, the shameful pursuits and ungodly longings, but the one who does the will of God and carries out his purposes lives forever. And children, it is the last hour, the end of this age. And just as you heard that the Antichrist is coming, I told you it's either one, the Satan or the Christ. You want, I want Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, the Antichrist is coming, the one who will oppose Christ and attempt to replace him. Even now, many Antichrist false teachers have appeared, which confirms our belief that it is the last hour. They went out from us seeing at first to be Christians. They seemed like they were Christians, you know, mm -hmm. like all these different churches and people that's over them, you know, yeah. false teachers and everything. Uh, it said they went out from us seeming at first to be Christians, but they were not really of us because they were not truly born again and spiritually transformed. Mm -hmm. For they had been, been with us. Wow. If they had been with us, they would have remained with us. But they went out teaching false doctrine so that it would be clearly shown that none of, of them are of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, especially gifted and prepared by the Holy Spirit. All of you know the truth because he teaches us and illuminates our minds and guards us from error. He keeps us from sin and children. Mm -hmm. And it says, I have written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you do know it. And because no one, no lie, nothing false, no deception is of, is of the truth. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Christ that Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one. This is the Antichrist, the enemy, the antagonist of Christ, the one who denies and consistently refuses to acknowledge the Father and the Son. Sound just like them Sadducees and Pharisees. And it says, whoever denies and repudiates the Son does not have a Father. And the one who confesses and acknowledges the Son has the Father also. As for you, that, that remain in you, keeping your hearts the meshes of salvation, which you heard from the beginning, as I read in John from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning remains in you, you too will remain in the Son and the Father forever. Amen. So that's just important for us to know. And y'all continue to read, and a lot of that is, is in Acts 2. Um, wow. Continue to read your uh, chapters and acts every day as the pastor has told us to read. And when you read that, you're going to see different footnotes in there. You should read those too because uh, we can never get enough 
of the Word of God. Well, the reason I told him to read the book of Acts is because we're going to be teaching on led by the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And you're going to see that all the people in the book of Acts were led by they the Spirit. They were absolutely led by the Spirit. Amen. And that's the only thing that can qualify you. That's when you led by the Spirit. You got to be led. You got to be led. Amen. Because our knowledge is in fragments. Amen. <laughs> But the Holy Spirit is all knowing also because He is of God. Close us in prayer. Yes. Uh, I appreciate everyone being here and uh, I ask God to bless you all. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I just come to you with thanksgiving in my heart. I'm just overly, um, I'm just full of joy. I, I love you, Lord, for filling me up uh, with your love and your joy and uh, giving me strength and energizing me so I could. Uh, Come here this evening and get the word. Lord, you are a blessing, not just to me, but for everyone that's listening. Lord, and we thank you for all the gifts you've given us, uh, gifts heaped up on gifts, and your blessings upon blessings. Lord, we thank you for your Holy Spirit, and we ask you to continually, Lord, to allow your Holy Spirit to lead us. Uh, and we repent of anything that, uh, before you, Lord, uh, uh, anything that we haven't done right this week that you told us to do, Lord, uh, have mercy on us, dear Lord. Just uh, continue to have grace on us, Lord, and, and so we can get those things done, whatever you tell us to do. I don't know what you have told uh, all the listeners to do, Lord, but I know when you tell me to do something, you have been, you're faithful. If we confess our sins, you're faithful enough and just to forgive us. So, Lord, I... Um, Thank you for being so kind and so uh, having so much love in your heart for all of us because you don't want any of us to perish. And Lord, just uh, help us continue to get the word out to the people and those that's listening and they get the word out to the people around them, their families and loved ones because time is winding up uh, and we know we got to be about your business and not... Uh, be about doing something we feel like we need to do. We need to do what you tell us to do. And we just thank you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If you would like to become part of this ministry, you can reach us at www.thechurchcleveland.org. Thank you for viewing. Amen.